the so you're the man with all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the man with them, but I don't share them. That's the oh. thing. You know, it's all closed off here. <laughs> You've been doing this for so many years now. Can you talk a bit about the process of how you come up with these big arcs for each season? Thank you. Especially being 13 seasons in. Yeah. When you start thinking about it. To me, what makes a good episode makes a good season, and ultimately that's asking a question. If we did blank, whatever the blank is, to Sam and Dean, how would it affect them? And on an episodic basis, like, okay, if we took away Dean's memory, right? If we did something along those lines, how would it affect him? On a larger season arc, if mom came back, now that they're both in their 30s, now that they're both fully grown adults, how would that affect them this season? If Sam and Dean find themselves through hook and crook, the stewards of a kid that could save the world or destroy it, but essentially being parents, I mean, because that's what it boils down to, strip away all the genres if that's the story we're telling, how does that affect them? And I think that's what makes us makes the strongest stories is when you can take a very big thing, whether it's the apocalypse or the apocalypse number two or number three, and then we're on like number six, and boil it down to a question you're asking about our guys and our core characters. So what is I mean Sam, Dean, and Castiel. Yeah. How far ahead do you have planned this from here? Um, in terms of this season? This is the season even possibly in, you know, another season? After you know that? what, I think you know, we are very hopeful the show will go beyond this season. So we're certainly not planning this season as like, this is it. Um, it may end up being, you never know in television, that's the way it goes. But, uh, but we're, not, we're not planning this as like an end run. Um, in terms of this season, I think we have an extremely, uh, in terms of signposts, milestones, I think we understand what the season is going to be. In terms of more specific thoughts, we're through uh, about half the season. Can you talk a little bit about the generational appeal of the mm -hmm. series? I mean, lasting for now 13 mm -hmm. seasons, and you have parents that are introducing yes. their children to, yes. to this series now. Yeah, I mean, I think what made Supernatural a success from day one makes it a success from day 1984, and that is these two characters, these three characters, and the bond that they share. And what's been really awesome for us is that having Netflix and things like that, you know, we were just down in the autograph line and a girl comes through, she's 12 years old, you know, but she's watched every episode because her mom got her into it, exactly like what you're saying. So it's a matter of, you know, that's what makes it appealing. And then it's a matter of having a show that people can, is very accessible. Because, you know, when I started on Supernatural, so I joined in season four, like the only way to get it was go out to spend $150 on DVD sets. And now your Netflix subscription, it's all there. And not only that, you get, you get it, you watch the first episode, you go online, you go on Twitter and Tumblr and whatever, and you type in Supernatural and there's a whole community waiting for you. And that community can be fractious at times, but ultimately I think it's an extremely strong and extremely positive thing. And so it, it builds on itself. And every show over time suffers from attrition. People fall in, people fall out. The great thing that we have done and that Netflix and streaming has allowed us to do is that as people fall out, new people kind of discover the show and come in. Some people come in, you know, they'll binge the whole thing, they'll watch a few live episodes, and they're like, I like binging better, and they'll go off and they'll just wait for the new season to come up. That's completely fine. You know, and it allows people to consume the show in their own way, which I think, again, broadens the audience base. Um, in the first half of the season, since you kind of got it mapped mm -hmm. out, is there, is there something that's coming up that you can't wait for the fans to see? Can you point us in the direction of where, when that will come? I would say that there is something in episode four that I'm extremely excited about, and I think the fans will be very excited about as well. And then, uh, coming in the second half of the season, but we've done it already, uh, the animated episode I think people will be very excited about. Uh, and then obviously episode 10, uh, the spin-off, I, I very much hope people will, will be really excited about. So we, I think we've got a lot of really cool stuff in the wings this year. Okay. So seeing as Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Jensen keep up the father-son banter on mm -hmm. Twitter, any chance that will make it famous? I, I don't know that it will be this season. I, I, I hope that before the show ends, we can make that work. I mean, Jeffrey Neymar is a, like an awesome actor, and we would love to have him back. He's a little busy, but, <laughs> but, but we, would love, we would love to make something like that work. And it feels like as the story winds down, whenever that is, and again, I, I don't know that it's going to be this season. I, I hope not. I think there are more stories to tell. Um, that that would be, that is a, that is a, a loophole that needs to be closed. Yeah. You mentioned in the panel that Missouri Mosley is coming back. Yes. Uh, is that the first half of the season? Yes, that was episode three. Yes. yes. That's correct. Um, talk a little bit about the challenge with Jack and making sure his story doesn't too much mirror Laura's. Yes, I think the difference, the core difference between the two of them is that Amara came back with an extremely specific agenda. 
she was not new to this world. I mean, she was new to the world, but she was this ancient entity. She's like, I'm back. I want to find and kill God. Like, she had a very strong crew line throughout the entire thing. I think Jack is much more of a slave. And I think Jack is someone who, you know, you couldn't talk to Mara in anything. You know, she, you know, Crowley tried to like raise her, but it didn't work because she was her own person. Jack is someone who the boys can influence, and I think that can be good and that can be bad, because Sam and Dean have are great heroes and they have a lot of very positive qualities, but they have qualities that maybe aren't so positive too. And like any parent, you know what I mean. You hope your kid gets the best of you, and so they, then sometimes they do. But you know, you have every, we all have our little ticks and things like that, and sometimes they get those things too. So it's about kind of making this much more key on the guys, whereas a Mara story happened. To a large extent, parallel to the guys. Uh, any crossovers you'd like to see with other shows? I know Arrow has been a big thing going on. <laughs> yes, Arrow has been a big thing going on. Um, you know, I think, you know, we're doing the Scooby Doo crossover. I think that would be awesome. I think Sam Dean and the Impala in an episode of Wacky Races would be great. Um, I think bringing another show. There's always a way to do it. There's always a way to make it happen. But there are certain shows that I, I don't think would organically cross with Supernatural, and there are other shows where if you brought them into the Supernatural universe, you know, if, if Supernatural crossover with Vampire Diaries, for example, like they just kill everybody. You know what I mean? Like it's the sh one one show has to end. One way I don't know which one, but one has to end because they're not leaving. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so so I, I I think for us. The, the more esoteric and weirder and f more fun, the better. Um, I think introducing superheroes into the world of Sam and Dean is really difficult. I know there's a way to do it, and we've talked internally about a way to do it that I think elides that. But if you're talking about like a straight crossover where like they just drive into, you know, Arrowtown, um, I don't know. What to say. Um, I, I think that's hard to pull off. But there are ways to make things like that happen. And luckily, you know, in in the world of alternate universes, you never know. <laughs>